Okay. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to, we're going to look at the force feedback again. There's a question that arises, so we're going to do this again. So here's a go. Force feedback is going to be at zero. Zero. There we go. Zero force feedback. Okay. Then we're going to go to the globals again. These are my globals. Okay. You see I have the steering gain at 100 again. And um, this time, I'm going to show you the in car settings. And uh, let you take a look at the telemetry. You'll see the telemetry is exactly the same as it was in the prior two videos when I didn't show the in car force feedback settings. So I'm reading the post is by Jack Spade. He says, uh, uh, what does he say? Um, Grimy dog, your values are way too much. Tire Force 98 MZ and Master Scale 100. I don't even count the others. Uh, you can read it. Let's look at the in car settings. Right? Everything is stock. Stock car. All for you to see. Untuned suspension. Ba ba ba. Only thing I took was I changed the fuel load. And go back to my usual 10 gallons of fuel. Alright, let's go force feedback. 100. I change, I usually run this at a 2. I just put it at a 4. Playing around with that. 30, 100, 100, 0, 0, 0. Arm angle is stuck. I never tune any of the cars. Body scale. I just leave the body stiffness up at 100.1. It doesn't do anything because body scale is at 0, 0 0.1. So whatever. SOP scale, standard and stock settings that I use. Now let's go look at this force feedback in action. Woo! Well, so even with a setting of zero force feedback, the um, the graph still remains the same. You know, it remains the same. Matter of fact, I still have some force feedback left on my wheel. The V2 is a very sensitive wheel. And so that's why I can run my force feedback. So my in-game force feedback, I can run it so low. Because the, the V2 has a very sensitive input gain on it. If you feed it just a little bit of signal, the wheel amplifies it up to be a lot. Now, in comparison to my TX wheel, if I cut the force feedback in game down, then I lose some force feedback to the wheel. Okay, not not much, but well, yeah, you do. It, you know, it kind of acts as a volume. So, with the TX wheel, I, I use it as a volume, and you know, you just have to set it appropriately so that you're not feed in the wheel too much force feedback. You feed it too much force feedback signal, you start getting giggled. It's garbage in, garbage out. It just jumbles everything around because you're going into in, you're going into input overload. You're really feeding it more than the wheel can handle. Alright, now let's do this. We're going back out of there. My thing is um not is that you don't need 100% in-game force feedback. You find the appropriate level of force feedback for your wheel and you set it and forget it. And it's not 100% on console. Okay, again, when I was using 100% in-game force feedback, my wheel was running at 125 or 130 degrees. Um, I start using 35% in-game force feedback Wheel now runs at 100 degrees, feels great, and that's what it does. Now, we're going to go back here. Uh, 
Go back to my standard force, my 35. Actually, running it at zero felt damn good. But again, again, like I said, the um, V2 has a very um, high, very, you know, good input. It's very sensitive to force feedback input. Okay, so it takes a little signal and it makes it into a big one. Same car, same settings. Let you see. I guess you don't need to see the settings again. It's all on video. You're seeing exactly what I'm doing. I didn't change the car settings or nothing like that. That way I can keep the video short. So, what does he say? Um, this will never get unsaturated and further processing in the chain. Whatever the steering gain is set at the end of it, let alone force feedback master I mentioned in post a few days ago. Well, Jack, you don't know what you're talking about. And that's that. And the video shows the proof. Now I go back to my 35% force feedback. And what do you know? The force feedback graph hasn't changed a bit. The force feedback on console is added in at the end of the chain. It's the last force added in. It only, um, you know, it, it's just the last force, the last thing added in, and it will not show in the graph. So you set it to a level that's comfortable and forget it. That's the difference between 0 and 35. I could actually run 100% force feedback too, and the graph actually looks the same. Actually, let me do that. Let me come out of here. I'm going to run 100% force feedback just so you can see it. And the graph again will be identical and the same. So, my thing is, um, now, everybody's looking for w what kills the dynamic force feedback. Well, the first video already showed you what kills the dynamic force feedback. When you reduce the tire, the, 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 the steering gain. Steering gain being reduced kills the dynamic force feedback. Okay, let's go here. Controls, and we're gonna run 100. One hundred. So we ran three force feedbacks. Zero. Thirty-five, which is my standard. And one hundred. The graph is going to be the same for all three of them. No difference in the force feedback graph the only difference will be whether you're feeding whether you're starving your wheel for force feedback signal you're feeding it just the right amount or you're feeding it overkill now it's better to feed it too little than it is to feed it too much if you feed it too too little you won't burn it out if you feed it too much you'll burn it out quickly well what do you know 100 on the force feedback and the graph is still the same. So, there you go. Graph looks exactly the same. Go to pit box and for the outro, I'll go through the settings for you again. Okay, you can see all the settings are the same.
And look at that. I didn't even adjust my tires on there. Whoop. Ha ha. So, anyway, there we go. Force feedback comparison 0, 35, 100. The graph stays the same. Okay? The only difference it is is whether you feed, you're starving your wheel for signal or you're feeding your wheel too much signal. I'm of the theory you don't need 100% force feedback because as I said when I was testing it I was running 100% force feedback the wheel ran at 125 to 130 degrees. I cut the force feedback down to 35 the wheel runs between um, 95 and 100 degrees, maybe 105. It's a hot day, okay? So when you run in 100% force feedback, your wheel is by default going to make more heat because um, that extra current has to go somewhere. The extra unused current that your wheel can't handle, that you're feeding your wheel, it has to go somewhere. So it's dissipated, it's grounded out and dissipated as extra heat. Bingo. You don't need 100% force feedback. And the graph stays the same. All of that, that this force feedback is added in after the relative adjust settings and the global have done their work. And so you don't see this in the force feedback graph at all. But you can feel it in the wheel if you set it too high and you start getting clipping. I'm out. Post your comments. Let me know what you think.